All right. Well, thank you for your time looking into our work. We're going to be looking into the power efficiency of a coflow jet airfoil in cruise conditions. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, this coflow jet concept uh, was uh, proposed by Professor Gesheng Za to provide short takeoff capabilities uh, due to super lift coefficients in airfoils by blowing tangentially at the suction peak of an airfoil. Um, so this is kind of how this geometry looks like. For a general cold flow jet airfoil, we have a fan or a compressor embedded into the airfoil, uh, sucking uh, air out of uh, the suction uh, surface of the airfoil and then bringing it back as a jet into this uh, slot here located at the suction peak of the airfoil. Uh, this jet concept uh, requires us to modify the external geometry of the airfoil, as we can see here. Uh, that causes an increase in drag coefficient of quite significant compared to the unmodified airfoil. We have about three times as much drag, uh, which then leaves us with uh, two possibilities. Uh, we can have this coflow jet, which is technically not required uh, in a cruise condition, and then we have a drag penalty, which is uh, not desirable. Or we can have this coflow jet system on during cruise, and then it serves as a partial propulsion system. So we have a jet coming out of this, and this reduces the drag, which effectively works as a thrust generating device. So then the question as a research here is, can uh, those drag savings in cruise offset the power consumed by op the fan, which is required to operate the system? And is there maybe an operational point that is optimal? So in order to solve this problem and to provide an answer, we first have to define the design geometry of the fan. We're not going to spend too much time here. Uh, this is uh, a fan that is inspired by Ren and Zaha's design, uh, where we transition from a circular geometry uh, from uh, the, the fan, which would have a circular cross section, into a slot where we're going to be blowing the jet. Uh, this is based on a super ellipse. Uh, as we increase this exponent n on the super ellipse, we make the corners of the circle or ellipse more and more uh, sharp, and then eventually it becomes a rectangle. So details are on our paper. Uh, of course, it's a straight duct, but we have to bend the duct in order to fulfill the requirements of the mechanical design of the system. Uh, so then we built a script in SolidWorks that kind of uh, makes these um, uh, intermediate profiles, and then we have this lofted surface that transition very nicely from the circular cross section to a slot where we're going to be blowing. So with this engineering details uh, taken care of, we performed engineering computations using ANSYS Fluent. Uh, the boundary conditions of the airfoil are very standard, but then inside of the airfoil, uh, we have this duct that we're also modeling. Uh, we model the fan as a fan boundary condition in Nancy's Fluent, which is basically a pressure gain across the space. And we considered uh, this pressure gain to be a specific value ranging from 200 to 6400 Pascal. And uh, free stream velocity is varying from quiescent all the way to 50 meters per second. This fan design is really uh, a supporting computation for. Uh, wind tunnel testing uh, with an actual fan, so we're going to see all of our results in physical units, but we're going to be able to generalize this uh, for uh, co-flow jet fan designs in the future. Okay, so for these specific conditions, each one of these data points here is a simulation, and each one of these black points is measurements of a physical fan uh, um, uh, sold by Schubeler with a 69 millimeter uh, diameter. And we see here that as we increase the free stream velocity, so from quiescent to 50 meters per second, we see that we get more and more mass flow rate. Uh, it turns out that it's kind of like the free stream is helping the fan operate. It's alleviating the, the pressure gain required by the fan. And what we find is that if we uh, consider the free stream as some extra pressure gain provided by the fan, then we get this minor loss coefficient uh, fit. Uh, with a constant in this case of 1.3. So that's very nice to see, and it kind of stands to reason uh, that the fan uh, would have this uh, kind of a minor loss uh, curve with a, some coefficient k. Okay, so looking into the drag, uh, the drag coefficient, we also find that there is a very nice collapse as a function of uh, C mu, or the momentum coefficient by the jet, and that collapse 
is basically of a linear uh, fashion. So we have some baseline drag where we don't have any co flow at CD0. And then we have uh, CMU times some constant beta, which is negative because we're producing thrust. Here's a little schematic. We're producing this jet, which, produ which produces thrust. We also see that the constant is greater than 1, so it's a 1.5, which means that we get more thrust by the geometry of this problem than we would have gotten if this jet was just sitting in the middle of a free stream. So that's very nice to see, and it's part of why this concept may be compelling. Okay, so now that we looked at the forces, uh, we can also look at the uh, energy cost and the power savings. So if we make a, um, an assumption that the flow is incompressible, then the power required by the fan is just the isentropic pumping power of an incompressible pump, which is a volume flow rate times delta P. And that has a fairly small error for uh, um, low velocities, which is um, uh, compatible uh, with some uh, cruise conditions. Um, if we look at the power savings or the gross power savings by the co-flow jet, uh, that would be basically comparing with some uh, reference case, the space line unmodified airfoil drag minus the, the drag produced by the co-flow jet times the free stream velocity. And we can normalize this by a reference power, which is based on the airfoil plane form and the free stream velocity cube. If we do that, we get uh, the Basically, everything becomes uh, drag coefficients. But then we get this uh, these two values here, which are constants. And this term here turns out to be like a dra the drag penalty uh, for modifying the external surface of the co-flow jet airfoil. Whereas this right-hand term here is the thrust produced by uh, the airfoil. We can perform the same uh, normalization uh, on, the, uh, on the power consumed by the fan. And we see that this is the form that we get, uh, where we have C mu to the three halves uh, uh, power, uh, which dominates here, and a minor loss uh, by the duct. So now that we have these two curves, uh, we can plot them as a function of C mu. So the blue curve would be the savings, which takes shape of a line, and uh, the red curve is the power consumed by the fan, which takes the shape of the parabola based on the three halves exponent. Uh, we see here that the, when the blue curve is above the red curve, we have net power savings. So we can actually subtract these two curves and get a curve for the net power savings. Uh, we also now, uh, this red curve here is the isentropic power required by the fan, but uh, we can assume an isentropic fan efficiency, and then we can play around uh, with this value of eta fan to generate diff different curves. Uh, we see that at 100% efficiency, we get uh, net power savings at a very wide range, and then this range uh, is diminished to no power savings uh, at any point for a fan efficiency of 75%. So this would be for this uh, specific uh, design that we described, uh, and we already have net power savings even for a reasonable efficiency of 75%. Okay, uh, the point uh, that, uh, or the takeaway message from this um, work is that we are able to define the net power savings of the co-flow jet system by a set of four constants, K1 to K3 and beta, and those constants, uh, they, are, they can be designed and optimized to get uh, the best power savings for our system. So the two first constants, K1 and K2, they're functions of the minor loss of the duct at the slot area ratio, whereas uh, K3 is this uh, geometry penalty for changing the, the external geometry, whereas beta is our thrust leverage term uh, that we get from um, uh, changing the geometry of the airfoil. And we can tune these constants to get uh, best uh, um, efficiency in the design that we uh, looked at, which is based on the design by Zaha et al. 2018. Uh, we get a minimum uh, efficiency of 75% to get net power savings, but uh, as we discussed before, we can uh, tune these constants and maybe focus our efforts into getting um, uh, lowering this threshold uh, efficiency for a more um, viable design in engineering of the system. All right, so that's all I have. So thank you very much for your time. And if you want to see more details, uh, have a look at our paper. So thank you very much and have a great day.